This is going to be a moderately short video showing how to set up the Insight 2800 or 3800 series Cognex camera uh, to talk to the PLC and more importantly how to get the position data of the found object uh, into the PLC for vision guided uh, robotic work. So once you've started up the Insight Vision Suite, select your camera. We're going to work with camera IS 2802M-26, which is in the lab. Double click on it. It will load to the camera and show a rough picture of what we have. I'm going to create a new job. Well, I'm going to take it offline first. Create a new job. Yes. We are going to use the camera as our source. We are going to optimize our lighting. We're going to optimize our focus. And then we're going to select the little settings icon and make sure that trigger type is single. And I am going to go ahead and deselect everything except factory protocols because that's how we are going to trigger it. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else here alone. That's fine the way it is. To do this, the first thing we need to do is come in and find a pattern. And just like with previous versions of the Insight software, it gives us a search region. It will give us a model area. We're going to select these three, uh, four bolts, excuse me. And we're going to actually tell it to do a circular search uh, because we can. Tighten down a little bit on our sample. Tell it OK. It is going to go out and find it. That's the best one it found. That's fine. We could theoretically change the thresholds and the angles. The angle doesn't really matter since it's a circular part. Uh, we could come into settings here and change some other, th other things. But again, we're just going to leave those alone. So at this point, I've found a feature that I want to search for and the other functionality for the Insight Vision Suite is going to be in other videos. There are a lot of videos on Cognex's uh, YouTube channel. I'll put a card link to that up in the upper right. Uh, but the next thing we need to do is add a way to get this data back out. And so we're going to click on the plus sign in the upper right. And we're actually going to add a math tool. And so this will give us the ability to add functions that are not as straightforward, I guess. Um, I could do math functions in here. I could do a bunch of other things. Again, not for this video. Uh, here, we're just going to worry about how do we get the location out into the PLC. And so I need to select here on the little link icon in cell A0. And we are going to come down and tell it to output the fixture zero value. Once I've done that, I can click on A1. And where it says A1 equals, we can start typing in our function. And we are going to use get x. And we're going to add a parenthesis. We're going to type in the cell value that we're getting the information out of, which is A0, close parenthesis, hit enter. And you'll notice it gives us a coordinate. Now, this coordinate is in pixels at the moment. I have not run a calibration on this camera. If I had run a calibration, this would be giving us the offset from the origin of the calibration. I'm going to do uh, A2 here. Again, we're going to type in get, in this case, Y, to get our Y offset. Parentheses A0 again. And it will tell us that it's 477 pixel point whatever pixels um, from its, its, uh, its current origin. And that is all we have to do within the vision suite uh, for the math tool. I can close that. I can expand that if I want to, whatever. We next need to go to communication. Now, I have previously configured this camera to use Ethernet IP. Um, 
but we're going to come down here under target protocol, Ethernet IP, and where it says input output data, we're going to go to format data, and under outputs, we are going to add from the math tool, A1, and we're going to leave the default values for the data type and the size. We're going to also do the same thing for the Y location, and that is now passing uh, X and Y. We could also, if we wanted to, pass other information, but again, at the, sound, uh, at the sake of sounding uh, rather repetitive, that is not part of this video. So at this point, we have really done everything we want and need to have done. We could come down to the HMI and view what we've done if we want, if it makes it easier. Uh, we don't really care about whether or not this succeeded, so we can turn that off, but we could turn on the X and Y locations just to allow us to see how things are going. Now, one thing to note, even though this is a static image, by virtue of how the camera takes a picture and sees stuff, and what you can't tell from this picture and the image is there are fluorescent lights above the robot and the camera, so there is some flickering, which means that there is a little bit of changes and alterations in the shadows, and so it, it will do a minor, less than a pixel, remember these are pixels, uh, amount of shifting in where it thinks the location actually is when we run this over and over and over. So at this point, everything is done. We can save this, and I am going to call this video demo, and I can place that online. And at this point, we are ready. You'll note what these values are currently. And I'm going to switch over real fast to my PLC. Uh, normally, this would have uh, where it says trigger on rung zero of the PLC logic. That would be tied to the robot to trigger the camera. But we're going to trigger it manually from here. And I can come down and do trigger. And for those that don't know what PLC logic looks like, this is what it is. It is doing these steps in sequence. So when that went true, it turned on the trigger for the camera. Once the camera said, hey, my results are valid, it will copy the value from the inspection results into a uh, variable called X offset. And the same thing for Y and copy that. And so remember, in our communication, we set things up so that go offline so you can see this, so that X was first and Y was second. So X is first, Y is second. It then says, the logic says that if the results are valid still, which they are, and the PLC is not um, acknowledge that, then acknowledge it, and then turn off the trigger so it's not still true. And the way the PLC works is it scans from zero to three and then goes back and starts over again. And the next time it comes through, this is no longer true because val results valid has been turned off and this is actually turned on. Um, so that will turn that back off. And what has happened, if we go to HMI, that value may have changed. And in this case, it may not have. So we'll trigger it again just to see. And 050 there. Now it's 091. So as you see, less than a pixel and significantly less than a pixel of movement in where that is. Now, nothing is physically moving, uh, like I said, because of the lighting and other things with the way the camera has, has to process the image. We do see that slight shift. But we are getting our updated value every time the camera is triggered. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, the reason this video was put out was there actually are no videos that are easily searchable in YouTube search algorithm to find this functionality. So I want to thank the, the great tech support folks at Cognex for helping me to get this to work without me having to wade through all of their manuals. Thanks a bunch and hopefully you'll find, find this useful.